Good evening. This is All India Radio Kohima. I'm Jonas Yandan with Evening News. The headlines. Total COVID-19 positive in Nagaland increases to 644 cases. Nagaland government disperses first installment of post-metric scholarship amounting to 1,939.68 lakh rupees. Minister Demchen Im Nalong says there shall be zero tolerance to any corruption in scholarship disbursement. And University Grants Commission says final year examination in universities to be held by September end. The total number of confirmed COVID-19 positive cases has increased to 644 after a total of 19 new cases have been reported today. Minister for Health and Family Welfare, S. Pom, in a tweet this morning said that out of 313 samples tested, 11 new cases were tested positive COVID-19 which include 10 positive cases from Mon and one from Kohima. The minister also updated this evening that another eight fresh cases of COVID-19 positive have been detected in Twensang. He also informed that 60 more patients have recovered, out of which 59 are of COVID-19 care centre, Perrin, and one from Kohima. He, however, said that they will be kept under strict surveillance. Meanwhile, the active cases in the state stands at 341, comprising of 338 cases of asymptomatic, 2 mild and 1 with moderate symptom, while 303 patients have recovered. Directorate of Higher Education, which is the implementing agency of three scholarship schemes in the state, has dispersed an amount of 1,900 $39.68 39.68 lakh rupees to 39,975 students as the first instalment of the post metric scholarship for ST students of Nagaland for the year 2019 20. Addressing a press conference at Kohima today, OST scholarship, Gedu Selye Geho informed that the department has proposed to the central government an amount of 2,166.43 lakh rupees as the second instalment of central share. He said that the department has also awarded merit scholarship to 1,734 meritorious students amounting to 266.21 lakh rupees and to 132 research scholars amounting to 33.66 lakh rupees. He said the department has selected 74 eligible professional students under the NEC stipend and book grant scheme for the year 2019-20, which will amount to 16.62 lakh. However, he added that a sanction is still awaited. President of All Nagaland College Students' Union, Vime Yeko Witso said, the students' community have started receiving the first instalment of scholarship a week back. While emphasising on the need to streamline the scholarship schemes in the state, Witso also disclosed that 860 beneficiary students had failed to claim their scholarship amount from 2014 till 2017. He said the unclaimed scholarship money has amounted to 38,58,355 rupees. In this regard, Witso expressed hope that the department will do the needful. Minister for Higher and Technical Education and Tribal Affairs Temchen Imna Long said it is the ardent endeavour of the PDA government to make sure that scholarships are dispersed in time and that there is zero tolerance to any corruption in the scholarship disbursement. Addressing a press conference on scholarship at the Directorate of Higher Education in Kohima today, the minister admitted that there has been hiccups in the beginning due to some litigations. However, the state government could disperse all the pending scholarships since January last year. He assured that there shall be no such litigations, PIL or any kind of corruption in the disbursement of scholarship today and in the days to come. Along also made an appeal to the students' community to claim the unclaimed checks as soon as possible, saying that the department will revert back the unclaimed money to the concerned ministry or to the state. The minister further appealed to all the underground groups not to demand anything from the higher education department, saying that the department works solely for the welfare of students. This news comes to you from All India Radio, Kohima. The University Grants Commission has revisited its earlier guidelines related to university examinations. In view of the safety, career progression and placements of the students and their larger interest, UGC has decided that intermediate semester students 
will be evaluated based on internal assessment as per earlier guidelines issued. UGC has also decided that the evaluation of terminal semester students will be conducted by the end of September this year following the guidelines laid down by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare for COVID-19. According to the guidelines, final year students having backlog should compulsorily be evaluated by conducting examinations offline, online or blended mode as per feasibility and suitability. In case a student of final year is unable to appear in the examination, the candidate may be given the opportunity to appear in special examinations. This shall be applicable only for the current academic year, 2019-20, as a one-time measure. India and China have begun a long process of disengagement in eastern Ladakh after National Security Advisor Ajit Doval spoke to Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi on Sunday evening. The conversation finalised the disengagement in eastern Ladakh and the escalation along the LSE. The External Affairs Ministry said that the two special representatives agreed that both the sides should take guidance from the consensus of the leaders that maintenance of peace and tranquility in India-China border areas was essential for the further development of bilateral relations. They also say that the two sides should not allow differences to become disputes. Therefore, they agreed that it was necessary to ensure at the earliest to complete disengagement of the troops along the LSE and de-escalation from India-China border areas for full restoration of peace and tranquility. Nagaland Governor Arun Ravi has extended his Duluni greetings to the people of Nagaland, especially to the Simi brothers and sisters. In a greeting message, Governor Ravi said, Duluni festival symbolizes fraternity, solidarity and sharing. Although this great festival is being celebrated in an extraordinary COVID-19 situation this year with restrictions, Ravi expressed hope that a festive spirit of newness and bonding would restore the faith and help everyone to overcome the difficult time. The governor called upon the Sumis to lead the Nagas from the front to overcome the challenge that all are facing today. Extending Duluni greetings to the Simi community through a tweet, Chief Minister Nipirio wishes for a bountiful season, peace and well-being of everyone. He wished that the Almighty's protection will be upon us so that we can celebrate as a community in the days to come. Deputy Chief Minister and BLB leader Wai Badan also extending his greetings to all the Simis on the occasion of the Luni festivity hoped that the festival will bring forth a stronger bond of friendship and unity. A minor girl was charred to death while more than 500 families were rendered homeless when a devastating fire broke out at Dudu Goloni in Assam around 1pm today. The colony is located at the Nagaland Assam border and the residents are mostly labourers. STPO Pukachan John Das, who was at the site, confirmed that a minor girl was charred to death during the inferno and said the authorities are still assessing the situation. The fire reportedly started from a kitchen and spread quickly, engulfing the surrounding houses, he added. Das informed that fire dentists from Dimapur and Assam were pressed into service and it took nearly two hours to control the fire. And now it's when the news hit the main points again. Total COVID-19 positive in Nagaland increases to 644 cases. Nagaland government disperses first instalment of post-metric scholarship, amounting to 1,939.68 lakh rupees. Minister Demchen Nim Naolong says there shall be zero tolerance to any corruption in scholarship disbursement. And University Grants Commission says final year examination in universities to be held by September end. That is all we have in this evening news bulletin. Good night.